This is perhaps a bit of a shorter problem than I typically do on this channel, but it's definitely still interesting. Looking at this series, most people first notice the ascending factorials in the denominators and immediately think of the Taylor expansion for the natural exponential, seeing as that's the most famous infinite series with that characteristic. It's tempting, therefore, to look for a value for x that you could plug into the Taylor series expansion of the natural exponential to leave behind the series we have. But because the numerator numerator of the natural exponential Taylor series is x to the n, there is no value for x that you could possibly select that would do that. As a result, we're going to have to be a bit cleverer. It turns out that the instinct to try and relate the infinite series we're trying to sum to the natural exponential is the right idea. It's just that the correct relationship between the natural exponential Taylor series and the series we're trying to sum is a bit more complicated than simply selecting a particular value for x. It's easiest to figure out the relationship between our series and the Taylor series expansion of the natural exponential if we write everything in summation notation. With this done, the first step to getting our infinite series into form is to rewrite it as a sum of two infinite series, specifically splitting it on the n plus 1 sum in the numerator. One of the two infinite sums that this leaves us with can be directly related to the Taylor series expansion of the natural exponential. Specifically, we can rewrite the second term as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 to the n over n factorial, because 1 to any power is just 1 again, but that's simply the Taylor series expansion of the natural exponential evaluated at x equals 1, so we see immediately that that term in the series just equals e to the 1, or e. With the second term all figured out, all we need to do is work through the slightly more difficult first term, and then our job will be done. The trick with the first term is to realize realize that you can cancel the factor of n in the numerator with the factor of n in the denominator from the factorial, but there's a bit of a tricky bit here. It doesn't reproduce the series that we started with unless you also raise the lower limit of the sum from 0 to 1. That subtlety is the detail missed most commonly by students. From here, we can use a similar trick to what we did with the second term. We can rewrite the 1 in the numerator as 1 to the n minus 1, again, because 1 raised to anything is just 1. And then from there, we can decrement the lower limit of the sum without changing the value of the sum, assuming we also add 1 to the integer that we're summing over. With that final change done, the sum we're left with, again, is simply the Taylor expansion of the natural exponential evaluated at x equals 1. Therefore, the first term also just equals e to the 1, or e, and the overall series just equals 2e. I personally find this result quite interesting, and the reason why is this. If you took the original sum we started with and replaced all the integers in the numerators with 1, you would simply get a series that straightforwardly equals e. But if instead of 1s you have those ascending positive integers that characterize the series we just completed, it has the effect of multiplying the answer by 2. Instead of just getting e, you get 2e. I find it kind of counterintuitive that replacing those ones with the ascending positive integers would have the effect of multiplying the answer by 2, but nevertheless that is the case, and I thought that made it cool enough for a video. Not to mention that evaluating series like these is good practice. If you enjoyed this video, or at least found it interesting, please consider sharing it with a friend, giving it a thumbs up, and subscribing.